Uh, I mean, Sokolov, this is a div uh, DVD for a chess base. It has to do with the uh, pawn structures. And I will start with the uh, hanging pawns in center. Uh, hanging pawns in center is an uh, important pawn structure and one difficult one to master. Why? Because it is very dynamic. It can come from many different openings and it can also come often from isolated pawn in center that due to trades of pieces comes uh, transformation of a structure. Uh, I will start this with one game that had profound influence on me understanding those positions of getting perception of those positions. This is game between Capablanca and Alakain played in uh, their World Championship match. I was not a strong player at the time. I was maybe 2250 or 2300. And uh, of course at that time there were uh, no databases, uh, even no uh, computer engines for sure, because, uh, okay, I'm talking some period like 40 years back. So let's see how this game goes and what it uh, somehow impressed me at the time. Capablanca is white, Alekhine is black. This is 17th game of the match in Buenos Aires in 1927 for the World Championship. Queen's Gambit uh, declined was uh, played a lot in their uh, World Championship match. B6, okay, B6 is... Uh, one of the moves here, for example, maybe move which is also played a lot, but it is a different concept. This is uh, to take because with last move, white also wants to save time because if white would let's say move the bishop, then black would probably take and push and then try to play move bishop e7 and to liberate with a c5. So what white wants to do, white wants white plays move a3 because white would like to have this whole situation in a little bit better version. Uh, black can still actually take on c4, bishop c4 and play move b5, trying to achieve exactly the same thing. Bishop b7, c5 and to liberate and to have 3 versus 3, uh, to, to change uh, these pawns and to have a 6 versus 6 pawn symmetry and uh, equalize the game. Well, Alekhain played here move b6. Okay, and this uh, aims for a different, it allows different structure. He just wants to develop bishop uh, regardless. Uh, maybe it is good to mention, because here Capablanca took c takes d5. Maybe it's good to mention why he doesn't take c takes d5 here. Well, because if you enter this kind of position, which is uh, now looks like Queen's Gambit uh, exchange variation. We have extra moves, uh, rook c1 and a6. Uh, Black can opt for two possibilities. He can opt for a plan to push c5 and to have a, a, a isolated pawn in center. For example, Black can start with the move b5 and play bishop b7 and then push c5. It is not clear if white has something special there. But second option, what is also often played, is let's say move like c6. And uh, it is not clear that white made much of a profit. On one hand, this move c6, a, uh, c6, a6 combination, this extra moves a6, in some lines you can claim that uh, weakens the square, but in some lines it also prevents a quick uh, uh, pawn uh, minority attack. So this position is considered about equal. So, a3, Capablanca played b6, and now Capablanca went to this kind of pawn structure, which starts to look like a uh, Tarash pawn structure variation. Uh, sorry, uh, that's a cover pawn structure variation. That's a cover of uh, Queen's Gambit accepted, or in some theoretical books, uh, they would call it uh, Bondarevsky Makagonov. The difference is that usually in those lines, uh, move h6 and bishop h4 are included. c5. Takes, takes. And we have uh, hanging pawns in the center structure. What Capablanca will try to do, he will try to pressure those two pawns so to force the black to take a decision as to how to push them. 
with this flexibility. He played first move queen e2, rook e8, rook c2, sorry, bishop c2, queen b6, rook d1, rook a d8, queen, b, queen on b6 is normally standing well here. Knight a4. Okay, here Alekhine went for interesting decision. He played for move queen b5. This is not exactly usual decision. Queen b5, a b5, knight back, bishop c6, and here came move bishop d3. So what uh, white would like to do, white would like to force black to push c4, and then to get his d4 square for his knight. Black indeed pushed c4. He agreed to it. Bishop f5, b4, takes, takes, knight d4. And now white went for logical transaction, giving bishop pair but damaging black pawn structure very badly. Okay, this position is what I wanted to talk about, but somehow changed my perception of uh, a number of things uh, in this uh, hanging pawns in the center structure. White is having tremendous blockade. This bishop looks like merely a pawn. King's side pawn structure has been damaged. Black does not have any counterplay. Not worth mentioning of anyhow. No counterplay. The only thing which Black has in return for all this uh, positional misery that he got is actually extra space. It is interesting uh, that Capablanca did not manage to win this position. And this somehow explains that uh, even when you have a, such a terrible situation as a black, so that you have these double pawns and you don't have a knight, because knight would actually here for black be a handy piece to create some play, that this space which you took sort of matters. This space matters. And even under these very bad circumstances, Capablanca did not manage to win this game. Alekhine held the game. Actually, he held uh, without too much uh, of a trouble. Because somehow this pawn is terribly weak, but it's very difficult to, connect, to collect it because something is, uh, is hanging all the time. Here it is also important that uh, it is much easier for black to defend this position if, let's say, all the four rooks will disappear. Because if all, all four rooks are, are going to disappear, it is going to be difficult to attack this, uh, this pawn on d5. This is more or less what is going to happen in the game. Okay, Capablanca is taking some space, but also creating potential weakness. And now Alakain goes to trade one pair of rooks. g4. Now he probably does a smart thing. He plays h5. It, you may say that uh, he has just uh, created and passed h pawn for white. But this is not exactly that way, because he has also now, as long as rooks are on the board, he has actually created a counterplay for himself. Or. So here, Capablanca decides to trade a pair of rooks to kill this counterplay. Okay, we have here a position that uh, White has these uh, fantastic knights and also has a passed pawn. Still, white cannot win this position because black is controlling a lot of squares. And somehow these knights, they cannot move so easily because when once these, those knights starts to move, this bishop is going to bother some of those pawns. And actually, black is going to hold this position very easily. King h4, knight. 
king moves because uh, uh, such a kind of move uh, will not be a, a great move because uh, it is always possible to do something stupid. For example, I can take and give a check. And now suddenly it turns out that this pawn is going to queen because there is little you can do. So king needs to be moved. Bishop b4. Oh, bishop is controlling the knight. Sorry. Bishop is controlling the knight. King g6. King f5. f5. Clever move. Why not to take some space? Knight f3. White would like to improve the knight, but bishop c5. Black has a target. King f2. Okay, bishop back. Knight e5. Bishop b6. It is very difficult for white to improve his, his position. White is now hoping his uh, h pawn to produce something. King back. Knight e2. Trying to transfer a knight. But now this bishop is no longer stuck to the defense of this pawn. So actually black cleverly improves the bishop because when bishop from this square moves to e6, uh, both of pawn weaknesses will be defended. King moves. Uh, black is having uh, quite a good counterplay here. Like for example, uh, uh, white wants to get uh, get close to defending this pawn. Like for example, if white decides to collect black pawn, it probably leads to a draw. Let's say bishop can move. That's why he played king e2. I want to attack a pawn. And okay, such a thing doesn't bring anything. Because bishop will collect a pawn. And this game is probably going to be a draw. And not, uh, not much is going on. Also, there are moves like this. So he plays king e2, trying to control this, this bishop. But now bishop comes from the other side. King d2, bishop d8. Knight d4 finally hitting this pawn, bishop c8. Well, taking a pawn is not much of a feat, sorry, like this, for example. By the way, uh, two bishops in such a position are fighting better than two knights. Because also there is a play on both sides. But, uh, uh, I mean, position is sort of open in a way that two bishops are controlling two knights. But if you can trade one knight for one bishop, and uh, that then circumstances may change that it becomes easier for knight to fight this fun bishop, though here in this particular position it doesn't matter because it is equal. So king c2, bishop a5, king d1, bishop b4, king e2, bishop b7, and they agree to a draw. This is important kind of a game. Why? Because this game is played in 1927. And we, we are going to see later on that white players would be willing to enter to allow such a kind of blockade, but to allow this kind of blockade, of course, in a better circumstances. That this pawn is, let's say, on g7, so that king's side is safe, and also that white can easily, in, under such a kind of circumstances, that he enters this kind of position in a better way, that white can, white can easily become even even better. I will pick up now one first one modern game and then I will come back to a few classical games of a Boris Pasky in the same same kind of system.